Crap, See, the legs are out again. My legs are also dripping. out. Dripping. For the babies. Dripping. Yo, fam. Had to bring the legs out for had the babies. To, had to, had to, had to. You know, two-tone? Two-tone? You know, <laughs> for everybody. Top deck chocolate. Uh, <laughs> you know? There's a shade for everybody out there. I'm Carlin. I'm... Wait, that's not how we... You have to say hello first. Who are you, fam? I'm Narika. And this is... The Bench. The Bench. The Bench. Why did the you bench. sing it? The Bench. The Bench. Can we please redo that? The Bench. You cannot sing. <laughs> Can we redo that? We're back. So we're not redoing it? Nah. We move, fam. Move, oh, move, we move, move forward. Move. We go forward. How are you doing, fam? I'm alright. Can't complain, you What's know? What's been happening? Are you still in the gulag? No. Yo, actually... We won. We won. <laughs> We won. Mad story, guys. He started screaming in his room as if a murderer jumped through his burglar guarded windows and started attacking him. He was so oh, yeah. gassed. I was gassed. I'm still am gassed. Every time you, I mean, you're talking about it, I just want to talk about it. I mean, this whole video can be about how we actually won. Your TV game. We actually won a game of Warzone. But yeah, it's fine. We had to talk about the PSL. We had to talk about the PSL. International breaks are good in that. Mm hmm. International break was made better because after we sh shot our last video, yeah. Ghana lost to Sudan. Ghana did lose to Sudan. So that's a very quick update on that. Now that we live a point to Ghana, it's just a we have a chance to, to go on top, you know? And the boys get a certain confidence after going on top. So big up big up to the boys for actually sealing sealing those wins. But PSL is back. PSL is back. This weekend. I think like a lot of coaches don't really like Sm I wanted to say smock. Smock. They don't smock. They don't smock the. Smock the international they don't break. Smock you hear a lot of them complain about how, like, their international players are now traveling to yeah. Saudi Arabia, to like other parts of the continent, and then they have to come back. And now in a pandemic, COVID, that's yeah. tested, that's isolated for two weeks, so that takes them out of the game. It's a lot of admin, you know. Some of them come back injured, with little mm. niggles here, there, like serious injuries, like not serious injuries, yeah. but still, like it really affects your team if you are trying to build something trying to challenge for a title but this past weekend of football i don't think there were a lot of casualties it wasn't to, it wasn't the international wasn't, break, which, which is a good great, thing which was great, really great great so non-televised games this weekend black leopards versus marisburg united yo marisburg united the boys from kzn and course another l one no for black one. leopards four l's in a row um Stellenbosch played cheaper United. I said it last week. I backed my boys to take a dubs. My boys took a dubs. You can see wearing the kits. Well hey, done. Stellenbosch won 2 0 against cheaper United. I want to say the game was amazing just based on the win mm. and the scoreline, but I guess we'll never know, DSTV, because you're not showing us the games. Um, and then Cape Town City played Bloom Celtic. What is that scoreline? Yeah, the game was amazing because we like we didn't watch the game, so you know Bloom always just we played well, amazing. So yeah. Bloom lost four two. <sighs> we did, but we move. Six goals in that game though. That's a lot of. That would have been an exciting game. It to would watch. have been an exciting game to watch, but I mean, we move. Four goals from Cape Town City. Cape Town City seem like they there could be some heat. We move. <laughs> So the rest of the games were televised. Solos FC versus TS Galaxy. That game ended in a normal draw. Both Swallows and TS Galaxy are both newly promoted teams into uh, top five football. So they were like it was a uh, it was kind of evenly matched out where mm. both teams were out there attacking the goals yeah. and trying to score. But unfortunately, no one could get the better of. Yeah, I know it was kind of it was kind of weird. I mean, two new promoted sides. It was a good game to watch, even though it was a goalless draw. Yes. I know there was big chances missed on both sides, but I mean, it was still exciting football. So, big up to the boys. Take a point home. Still, neither team have caught L's so far in four it's games being played. Might be a tight league this season. TTM versus Baraka FC. Chakuma? Chakuma Cha Mazivandela. Have you been practicing? No. I okay. don't know it. Oh, natural. It's the hit topper. Um, so TTM took a dub. One no over they Baraka did. FC. They did. It was the Lompopo Derby. Yeah. There's a lot of teams in Lompopo. <laughs> they are, they so are. Surprisingly, surprisingly. I know that was a crazy match though. Especially after like a ninety third minute winner in a in a game is always exciting to watch, you know? But TTM, like they scored a goal, but then that goal 
was ruled out madness because of an offside but then you watch it and you're like that wasn't offside it wasn't offside it was just poor poor riffing i think poor riffing on the on the officials part i mean we don't expect that on a, at a professional level you know yeah like so it's just shocking so the commentators were saying so what actually happened was my man scored a cracker of a goal but it was called offside because two of his players were offside yeah, but they, were, they weren't affecting play they were interfering with play yeah, they were in the line of sight of the goalkeeper allegedly if there wasn't a word for like best goal not a word of the season <laughs> you know something like top that contender. yeah top contender yeah like you know best goal that best goal that could have been <laughs> you know the one that got away award TGM also missed the penalty yeah I know, they had chances to score I mean TGM dominated the whole game they had chances and I just don't think they took advantage of it in the, in the end of the day but I mean they won in the end so it's all about the dubs baby Golden Arrows versus Kaiser Chiefs. Big ups to Kaiser Chiefs for scoring, like ending their drought. Finally, ending their drought. Okay, the game ended two-two. Big up to our boys, Golden Arrows, for holding it down. Shout out, shout out. Against Kaiser Chiefs, uh, four goals in that game. I thought as soon as Chiefs scored, I thought they were gonna take it. I thought they were gonna take yeah. the win because it wasn't a penalty, it wasn't an own goal. They scored an open play. Finally, like day one thousand. A Chiefs attacker actually scores a goal. I think I thought when Arrows took the lead, it was gonna be another day for Gavin Hunt, where just things didn't click together and it wasn't working, and we we're gonna end up with another press conference with no thoughts. No thoughts. No thoughts. But that penalty awarded to Golden Arrows was sus. Sus. They sus. came after my boy Ole Katsande because that was not a penalty. Sus. I mean, again, it begs to the talk of how we might need VAR in the PSL. You know? Or just like better riffing. This isn't like that cost team three points. Because we know? could get VAR, but the people doing VAR could also not be that great. Do you yeah, know what I'm saying? True. But like, how do we improve the riffing? Because there are games where the riffing is on point, mm -hmm. but that st the standard is it's not like consistent. It's, not, it's, not there. it's inconsistent. Riffing it's not there. is so inconsistent. And that's the problem. Yeah. But yeah, so Billiard and Castro took Chiefs into the lead. And then Arrows made it 2 2. Amazing goal, from amazing goal from outside the box. I mean, it was bold up play. The striker came on. They literally laid it off for the player. Strike from outside the box, bottom corner. Like, there's no way I think any keeper in the PSL was going to stop that. Yeah. Like, the positive out of the game is that Chiefs scored. Sure. Their drought is over. Finally. Okay. But again, you watch Gavin Hunt in the coach's interview after the game, yeah. and it's, he just looks like he's defeated. Like he doesn't he does. know what more he can do. He's doing the best, the team's doing the best with what they currently have. There's a lot of conversation behind like whether or not the excuse of not having a transfer, a transfer window is actually an excuse, you know, because these are players who contested for the title last season, Yes. you know? Same team. Same team, same players. Yes. And like the excuse of not being able to buy players, I mean, it's things like, I think that's, that's a 50-50 excuse. I think Gavin Hunt's good enough coach to, to do well with the crop of players that he has. But it's just, it doesn't seem like it's working out. You know, when you watch Do you it, think it's a mentality thing now from the players to actually believe that... They're good enough. They're good enough. I think it's that and also... Like I, confidence. I, I swing on the side of not having the transfer window. You want to instill a certain like work ethic and, yes. and philosophy, you know, in, in the football style that you want to play. 100%. So you want to buy certain players that you believe will buy into your managerial style. 100%. And I don't think he has those players at Chiefs. So I think it, it's a bit of both. Like, he should be. Don't get me wrong. Gavin Hunt should be doing better with the players that he already has. I think he's doing... I don't... Like... But Narika. I don't think he's doing really bad. No thoughts, fam. I no <laughs> thoughts. What do you mean? I have, think, like, it took them, like, five games to you, score. Yes, it took them five games. But you watched, you watched, like, from the season opening game. It's not like they weren't creating chances. They weren't moving the ball from the back to the like to their goal yeah but like it's also that simple defensive mistakes that they're just giving up goals like they this team looks like they're leaking like he'd be playing right backs at right wingers he would be playing right backs in the center in the center back position like you know there's certain things where i think as a fan we try to understand of course he works with these players day in and yes. day out so he knows the type of capabilities like they, these players have and whether they have the mentality to play in certain positions yada da 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 you know so as a fan watching from the outside, it just looks like First it's of not all, gelling. Cap, Colin is not a Chiefs fan. 
as a football fan. Watching from know? the outside, wanting Gavin Hunt to do well. Um, it'll be very interesting um, to see Chiefs progress now through the it season. It would, it would. I mean, it seems like they're getting better. We want them to do better because more teams competing for the title, exciting league. And it's, I mean, we're all happy about that. Nobody wants to watch Sundowns run away with it again, you know? Pirates, Orlando Pirates, played Super Sports United. Mm-hmm. Pirates took another W, 2 1 against Super Sports. Um, Super Sport did take the lead over Pirates. Testament to the coaching and like the club of Pirates and the players to go 1 0 down yeah. and then come back and be like, we're the big man. Mentality, guys. 2 1 up. The so they equalized with the penalty and then. They took a late lead due mm. to a defensive error yeah, I know. from That's, Super Sports. <sighs> that, that must have been heartbreaking for the young defender, you know. So I had to give away, especially like in the 83rd minute, to give away a goal like that off your error. I mean... But we had this there. chat. So I told you, Pirates are, are taking it. Yeah, you did say. I don't think so, though. I think when you watch... I think Sundowns are taking it, right? Yeah. Preferably Bloom, you know? That would be my dream. But realistically... Dreams don't come true. This is real life. My pipe dream, you know? <laughs> this is real pipe life. Dream. Your life is not a movie. I think realistically, I think Sundowns are going to take it. Because when you watch Sundowns play, they play, like, probably, arguably, the best football in the country. But that's mainly because they have all the players in the country. But that's a conversation for another day. Talking about Sundowns, Mamalodi Sundowns played Amazulu FC. Seven goals in a PSL game. Yeah. You know what? Carl and I came here. We started the bench. We were skeptical about goals, about, about goals. PSL football. But that's because that's what there's they no told goals. us. There's they the, told us that, that there's no goals. There's no goals right? in, in PSL. They told us that it's just draws, you know. Our you top know, goal scorer only had 14, 14 goals in goals, the season. You know? Seven goals in a game. Mamelodi Sundowns beat Amazulu 4-3. Mm-hmm. That game was crazy. It was, it was. I mean, we didn't expect that many goals. On a Sunday, at least, you know? Sundays are meant for rest, <laughs> you know? But we were rocking on a Sunday, Carl. We were rocking. There's seven goals in a single game. I mean, you just can't get over that, you Amazulu, know? Amazulu took the lead off a defensive mistake of yeah. the captain. Oh, the captain. The captain. The oh, Brazilian. The Brazilian captain. Oh, my guy. So they went up 1-0. When I saw that happen, I was like, hmm... Are the owners... Did the owners prophesize? <sighs> the, the, the Amazulu owners. Did the Amazulu that owners... Place, that fourth place finish. Prophesize their top four finish. <sighs> maybe, maybe. But then... Timberzwane took control of the game. I mean, as the... As normal. As should be. As should be for the reigning uh, PSL player of the... Player of the season, you know? Show, show the calibre of player that you actually are. And the quality that you have on the pitch. The man scored... <sighs> The fourth fastest hat trick in South African PSL history. Yeah, crazy. I mean, that day he still wrote himself into the record book, and it wasn't just like scruffy goals, like yes. tap-ins and things. He, it was like proper three goal. He, quality, quality goals. You know, you're not gonna look back at that highlight read and be like, was it Timber? Was it yeah, Timber's yeah. Go- goal? You know, like uh, did it? Did it touch Erasmus? Did it, did it touch someone know? else? Did it? I'm not surprised though because. He did score an international break. In, in the Bufana games. He was just, saving us. You know, so he, I, I think he's been carrying on that form recently. He's hitting that form. And I mean, if Sundowns carry on with that form and if he stays on that track, as I said, they might run away with the league, you know? Yes. So we had a hat trick, mm-hmm. a goal from Amazulu. That's all before half time. Yeah. I mean, even the second half didn't disappoint. Eh? Came back in the second half. Madness. Another defensive error by the captain. Yeah. Shocking. Amazulu, you know. Yeah, I think they if, took their chances. If we handed out L's for the weekend, I think he'd be number one on the list. Kind of tough, eh? Gosh, I, mean, I mean, you don't want to give up, but I mean, my man, take your L, move it's on. One game, it is what it is. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't affect the rest of the season. I mean, obviously, I mean, for that game, he was probably feeling cuck, but I mean, we move, we move. So Amazulu made it three-two, and then I was like, yo, Amazulu aren't gonna take this L lying down. I thought. The game was done at a certain stage. Because after they made it 3-2, Sundowns ended up going up 4-2 with Shadow Lille from a corner. And that was off another mistake in the same game, but from the Amazulu keeper, Bata. And it was just... I think at 4-2, you expect the champions to run away with it, but then it just... More goals, guys. 
More goals. You didn't expect yeah, Amazuru replied with that goal, made it 4 3. It was madness. Like, I was messaging people. I was like, yeah, no, Amazulu's dead. Game over. You know what it is? Sundowns have the lead. Game's over. They came back. After that, when they made a 4 3, they made an exciting game to watch. Definitely game of the weekend, by far. By far. I'm, my game of the weekend will still be the Pirates game. No, so I cool. think I'm, I'm taking. Like, we said, Pirates, in theory, it should have been game of the weekend. But in terms of, like, second hat trick of the season, Fastest, fourth fastest hat trick in PSL history. It definitely has to be up there. Upcoming PSL fixtures. Um, so there's midweek games and then there's games on the weekend. Yeah, it's a lot. I mean, stretch over the whole week, Monday to Sunday. Yeah, football, football, football. Yeah. I ain't complaining. Not a bad, complaining. Thing. Not a bad Are thing. Are you complaining? No. Nah, Are you complaining? Are you complaining? <laughs> Sundowns against Stellum. Your guys. My boy Stellum nah. up against reigning champions. Sundowns, you said. You said. You said your guys were playing well this weekend. I don't you know because they, they didn't show it on TV, football. but they came with a 2 0 win. So I don't think they're going to make it easy for Sundowns. Tell them yeah, from the right. games we've watched. From the games we've watched, Tell them Boss seemed like a quality side to actually give Sundowns like a proper game. It's not going to be a walkover. No. It'd be an exciting game to watch. Bloma playing Black Leopards. Is that a certified win? I don't think so. I think it should be, right? It should be. There's no way. There's no way we should ever be losing to Black Leopards. Right. Let's start there. But Black Leopards this season, fam. Four games in. Four games in are on the top half of the table above us. I think the top four. They've won, I think, all their games. Don't quote me on that. But to face a Black Leopards side like this in the form that they're in, especially after catching 4-2, I think if we don't get this win, it's just going to be... But I, I believe in the boys. I believe in the boys to do it. How do you go if we don't get those wins, we're going down, and then you follow that up with, but I believe in the because boys. Because glass half full, fam. Look on the brighter side of life. Silver linings, you know? What does silver lining mean, Colin? Glass. Next episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, another game that we think that you should watch out for is the Marisburg Super Sport game. It's probably the one where it's most on the line for both teams, you know? Marisburg need to get a win, definitely need to get a win, stop the bleeding, you know, at the club. And then Supersport, obviously, because they won a challenge for a title this season, they actually do want to win, you know. So I think for both teams, there's a lot on the line. I think it's going to be an exciting game to watch because mm -hmm. I feel like Marisburg have the potential to be better and they just haven't hit their stride yeah, yet. Most of us. And Supersport, it's not like they specifically doing anything wrong. Yeah. I just think just they're, they're on the bad side of, like, terrible refing calls, terrible weather. A lot, of like, like, a lot of, like, small, like, decisions go against them a lot of the times, you know, yeah. football. So, like, be a good yeah. game to watch. I think it's that's a game a good that you game. should watch. Yeah, Because definitely. both teams want to win. Yeah, definitely one of the games to watch for the, for the weekend, you know? Another game that, um, based on this past weekend, mm. Amazulu... Cape Town, that, Cape Town City. That there, I think, is also... For me, For me, that's my game of the weekend, personally, because Amazulu are proving us wrong. I think they're proving a lot of people wrong. They're not winning, but you can... Like, when you watch them, you can see that this club wants to they, win They things. want to win things, yeah. Like, they actually want to do better than last season, you know, and they've made improvements. So I think... If they carry on the way that they've been playing, it's going to be it's gonna be tough for, for the big, like the top eight sides to actually go up against them and get those three points. They're it's not, not going to be easy. Over. Yeah, it's not going to be like those easy three points. Like, oh, we're playing Amazulu, you know, we already have three points in the bag before the whistle even 100%. blows. 100%. You know? And then Cape Town City banged in four goals against Bloom over the weekend. So, I think it's going to be, I'm hoping that this game has a lot of Why goals. Why bring up Bloom, bro? I know, but Why are you going to bring up Bloom? We're not even talking. We're talking about Amazulu versus Cape Town City. Yeah, but I'm, I'm using the reference of the last game against Bloom. Yeah. To speak about Cape Town City. So, guys, drop a comment and let us know who you think, after just four games, going into round five of games, is going to win and win and run away with the title this season. Do you think it's going to be Mamelodi Sundowns? Do you think it's going to be Pirates? Or do you think it's going to be Bloom? No. Do you think it's going to be Mamelodi Sundowns? Do you think it's going to be Pirates? And then let us know who you think is going to win. Amazulu, Cape Town City. Yeah. Do you think Amazulu are going to end up in the top four based on their performances? Nah. Let us know. Drop a comment. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. This has been fun. The sun is 
The sun is giving Hot. us a, a great tan Hot for summer. Fur. So we out.